Scout, what the hell, man? All right, the dog took one of the low voltage mounts. Hey, good morning, guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today, we're going to continue my mini series on setting up my shack at my home QTH. Now, this is going to be a phased deployment, mostly because I need to grow into the system over the next year or so. So, I'm going to make some decisions that are not permanent, but they're best suited for what I need to do. So I have been primarily a field operator for the last three years, so this is all new to me. So I'm going to make some mis some mistakes. So please do not watch this thinking that I am the expert. I am not the expert. In fact, don't do what I'm going to do. I'm just going to bring you along for my journey, and I'm going to keep you guys updated over time. So I had a catastrophic failure with one of my radios running in my shack. It was over 90 degrees, and I was running it 24 hours a day. So that has prompted the shift of me moving my equipment inside the house right now Actually for the last year or so I've been running two antennas both on mr. Longarm uh, painters poles a, the first one is the chameleon cha lefts 8010 and this gives me coverage pretty much without a tuner on 10 meters through 80 so this will probably be up uh, permanently just because it goes all the way to the end of my property and yes it's low to the ground but i like envis and regional communication now the second antenna that i have up uh, has been my yagi it's the arrow 2 yagi and it is for uh, two meters right now in this configuration for vhf Again, it's on another Mr. Longarm. I'm using RG8X, which is not perfect for these runs. To actually get the HF antenna into the house, I'm going to need 125 feet. And then to get the VHF antenna, I'm gonna need 75 feet. Now, I'm not going to invest money right now in LMR 400. Even though it's high loss, I'm gonna use the RG8X I have for right now, mostly because this VHF UHF antenna or VHF antenna will be going on the roof. So I don't want to make that investment just yet. Also in the interest of full transparency, this is gonna be a raw video. So apologies for any background noise. I just need to get this project done and I'm gonna try my best to have, uh, you know, shoot the best way I can. So uh, for the last uh, year or so, I've been running the Yagi over here and to get across the threshold here, I'm actually using or have been using a, uh, I guess a wire threshold and it actually has both lines of coax going alongside here and then i have a dryer duct that goes into the garage so not perfect uh in the future i'm probably going to do a proper run up this side of the uh the building or the wall and then put a proper vhf vertical antenna so at that point we'll go ahead and do the um lmr 400 for the lower loss so stepping into the garage this used to be my my shack i've moved all the equipment inside and the cabling actually runs uh, across the threshold. And then temporarily, you guys saw it last week, I actually have it running and snaked in between the uh, door jam. It's actually not pinching it, which is kind of cool due to the, uh, I guess the, the rubber gaskets there. But the plan for today is to actually punch a pass through right here and into my office. All right, so heading on inside, like I said, for the last couple weeks, I have been running this RG8X into the house. My wife has not been pleased, but uh, she's out for a couple weeks, so I'm taking on this project. I have moved everything out of my office and temporarily put my shack here. The operating position is quite nice. So the other spot I showed you on the wall is roughly about this location. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, basically put in a, a low voltage uh, bracket on both sides. I have a couple of standard vinyl uh, wall plates. I'm going to drill these and put a couple of the bulkhead connectors and I'm going to do this on both sides. All right, forget the dogs guys. This is going to be a raw video. So I have a couple sections of LMR 400 that are going to use be used inside the wall to connect these two plates. Uh, I have an 18 inch segment and a 12 inch segment. So a few other people have asked me why not use like a brushed steel uh, or stainless steel plate. I'm probably going to do that. I'm reserving uh, basically some time today to go to Home Depot. I'm going to try to do this experiment with uh, or this installation with what I have and if it turns out that the vinyl plates are too weak and break I'm going to go ahead and swap those out for stainless steel. Now keep in mind that this is just going to be two antennas here. The ultimate goal since I have a, a exterior wall on this side and nice access to the roof I will be adding probably a plate uh, somewhere here that will have four more 
uh, VHF, UHF, or SO239 uh, connectors there going out with proper grounding. So that's kind of like the long-term solution. So I'll have up to six antennas basically with this shack set up. So today I'm gonna go ahead and basically figure out where I need to uh, mark the, the plate insert there, cut into the wall, drop this stuff in here, and then I'm gonna use the existing RG8X I have on hand and see if we can get on the air. Now I will tell you that I have been running JS8 call now for about a week with my FT897D on between five and 10 watts. So even with that 125 foot run on HF on 40 meters, I'm making contacts all day long. So yes, there are losses. This is not ideal, but again, this is a phased approach. So if you're new, don't do what I'm doing. This is just my journey and we're gonna get a whole lot better over time. It's just, this stuff is really expensive and I'm not used to operating at home. All right, let's go punch some holes in the wall after we make some measurements. All right, so I spent the last, ooh, I don't know, about 45 minutes to an hour making sure all my measurements are good and looking for a few things. I use the stud finder to make sure I knew where the studs were. I also uh, looked for electrical and then I decided to actually trace the uh, bracket for the low voltage mount 11 inches from the bottom. Now I also measured how far out I needed to go and in my case I had to go out 75 inches to have the same placement over here in the office. And just like the other side I went ahead and started by figuring out where the studs were. Uh, for some reason they're about 14 and a half inches apart and then I went ahead and used the low voltage box again to trace 11 inches uh, from the bottom using that uh, 75 inch corner. So we're gonna cut through there. Hopefully there's no electrical. My uh, stud finder that was loaned to me by a neighbor actually also will detect voltage and I didn't see any. So should be fun. Let's see what, uh, let's see how this goes. All right guys, so for this job, I'm just gonna use a simple drywall handsaw. And no, I'm not gonna show you what I'm doing mostly because I am not, 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 not the expert. This is the first time I'm cutting into drywall. I've done my best to make sure I'm not cutting into electrical or doing anything else that could be dangerous. But again, I don't want anybody to kind of see what I'm doing and take instruction from me. So consult a professional and uh, I'll show you the finished project even if I screwed up the whole damn thing. So using a um, razor actually turned out to be a whole lot smoother. Not bad. Didn't end up using the uh, the drywall saw. So that's what we're working with here. All right, that cut was nice and clean. I think that's the way to do it on the other side. Uh, I was actually a little bit uh, too conservative on my cuts and I can't quite get the box in there, but I think it's good. It's easier to uh, probably go in and just hit it with uh, the saw and just take off a few millimeters at a time. So anyways, really happy with this. Uh, like again, I'm a technical guy. I'm not really um, into construction. So kind of fun to get my hands dirty, even if it is a really simple drywall project for most people. All right, so we finally did it. That technique worked pretty well. And I've got the box now properly secured. And it looks like there is actually, uh, hopefully pass through into the office. So we're gonna do the same thing on the, the other side. I think I have all my measurements, right? So again, just to recap, I actually did not use the uh, saw for the actual main cutouts. Instead, I actually used the uh, the razor blade here. And then when I had to open up the hole, uh, usually a few millimeters at a time, the uh, saw actually came in pretty handy. Man, this rocking technique works really well. So much easier the second time. Well guys, that was so much easier the second time around. Razor blade is the way to go, especially a new blade. Just to make things easy, I went ahead and stuck my flashlight in the other hole. And uh, yeah, I could not be happier with this setup. I thought I was gonna screw up the measurements, but I guess this stuff is not rocket science. All right, folks, we have some good news and some bad news. It's mostly good news. Uh, I was able to get all of my coax run through. The problem is that I did not know how far my wall was, whether uh, between the drywall on the outside and the drywall on the interior, whether it was six or nine inches. And I ordered LMR a 400, a 12 inch section, and this is the ultra flex stuff. And it's just, it doesn't have the bend radius to go uh, between wall plate to inner wall plate. Uh, certainly the 18 inch is also not gonna work. So that was my mistake. 
Now, they do sell uh, various lengths of the female SO239, I think in like three, six, and nine inches. The problem is that my wall plates don't exactly line up. It's about maybe an inch and a half off on either side. So what I'm gonna do, given that it's probably a six or seven inch run, I'm just going to make a patch cable of RG8X for the two interior pass-throughs and deal with that later. At this point, I'm happy where I am and I'm gonna be able to start running some VHF, UHF as well as HF. And then I also have a lot of extra coax on HF, about 20 extra feet. The uh, VHF line actually looks pretty good. So I'm still on the fence whether I want to, I'm definitely not gonna go LMR 400, but I'm probably gonna remeasure with some paracord, for example, and then figure out exactly what run I need to get from the, at least from the VHF side, how far to come inside. So anyways, this is uh, current progress. This video is raw, very little editing, but uh, like I said, this was the part that really had me most concerned. So KT7 RUI Mobile. Well, folks, I'm not a big fan of uh, heading into town ever, but I figured what DIY project would be complete without at least one trip to the uh, Home Depot. So I have a few ideas to resolve some of the issues I talked about. Uh, I think I've got some wall plate covers that could do it. Anyways, I am really excited about the possibility of operating indoors for the first time. It's going to open up a bunch of stuff and move the needle. You guys are going to see all kinds of great uh, things come out of, especially the digital stuff I'm working on coming out of this initiative. So anyways, I'll let you guys know what uh, I go with at the Home Depot and uh, we'll continue the, uh, the project. So it's going to be a long video, but hopefully you guys enjoy the ride. Again, I'm not the expert. Uh, I'm just a dude figuring out this stuff just like you. You know we gotta park next to the Jeep here. Well guys, that was almost like going to a gun store, a little bit of a kid in a candy store. I thought I would be able to find something like this. This is a split wall plate and I hope to pass through the two coax cables from the garage side directly in so I won't even have to worry about drilling another plate and dealing with that pass through. So these are just going to dump through. Now in terms of the wall plate that will have the uh, coax connector, I decided to pick up a stainless steel wall plate. So I am gonna drill this and I don't have a uh, step bit to drill metal. So this was a good investment. This was the most expensive thing. It was almost 40 bucks. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a custom job there. For cable management, I went with a half inch uh, clamps. These will go in the garage to neatly dress it. And then since I'm going to be running my coax on the floor instead of up and over the door jam just to cut the amount of coax I need, I'm actually going to use the same uh, floor threshold. You guys saw this on the outside of my uh, house when I was doing the, the preview earlier. So we're going to use the uh, cable armor. So we'll see how all of this goes. I think it's going to be nice and clean. And then I'm also doing some research now. I was having breakfast and I think I'm going to go to LMR 240. Uh, it's lower loss than RG8X and a little bit easier to work with, but I'm going to probably go ahead and measure everything first and then put in an order to get exactly the lengths I need for both the HF side and then the VHF UHF side. All right guys, more stuff coming. Well, I gotta tell you, this split wall plate cover looks like it's gonna be the hot ticket. What's actually nice is I already ran my coax in through here and it's split plate, which means I could just go ahead and drop this guy on here. And uh, let's see if we could do this on camera. So what's cool about this setup is that I could technically do this in my office, but uh, I don't want to cheat. Uh, I do want to install the SO239 uh, bulkheads there, but I think this is actually a much better idea. I don't have to worry about two uh, other connectors with more loss and this gives me a lot of flexibility to uh, run the wire directly into the other side of the office.
got to tell you that bit is absolutely worth every penny. I went to uh, three quarters of an inch. All right, folks, that trip to the uh, Home Depot turned out to pay huge dividends. I took the stainless steel flush plate, drilled a 1 8 inch pilot hole, and then used my new uh, steel stepper bit. I went to just short of uh, three quarters of an inch, and it worked out really well. I have a very modest shop here. I've been growing my skills in my collection for some time. This would be easier for you guys that have a drill press, but uh, the hand drill did the job, and I'm really happy with the way this plate turned out. So, gonna do the installation. Got more to show you. Okay, so for the two bulkhead connectors, we're gonna end up with something that looks roughly like this. Since this is actual metal, I did not want any coupling. So I pulled out my little uh, gasket kit from the RV and I'm using two 15.8 by 2.4 millimeter gaskets. And uh, here's a close up of what that looks like. So I think this is actually going to do the trick. I just need to go ahead and add this guy here on the bottom. So really cool building your own uh, coax pass through. Alrighty folks, this has been a long day, but I finally have my custom wall plate. I even labeled it with my label maker HF on the top, VHF, UHF on the bottom, and then I even have the uh, coax also labeled. Still have to deal with covering up the threshold outside, but that's not a huge deal. So uh, let me assemble this and then we'll have some clothing, clothing, closing thoughts. It's been a long day, guys. Well guys, it's about a week later and I have to tell you, I'm absolutely happy I decided to invest the time to do this project. In fact, I should have done it a few years ago. It was much simpler than I thought it would be and it, real, it really boiled down to planning and having the right set of tools. So having that uh, really sharp utility knife, uh, fresh razor blade on there, having the drywall saw to open up the hole just a little bit, having the right uh, stepper bit to drill through the uh, wall plate were really all the things that uh, made this project really nice. In fact, I even enjoyed doing the pivot mid project. Initially, I had planned to have the two wall plates with two sets of bulkhead connectors on either side. Turns out just having the split wall plate and fishing the wire through was the way to go or the coax through. Uh, I do have to figure out how to seal that a bit more for the critters from the garage side coming in, but I think that's gonna be an easy problem to fix. Now, what really has been a game changer is the ability for me to have more radio listening time. This is my home office. So now I basically have that listening post. I leave VHF, UHF running on a handful of frequencies, mostly uh, simplex on 5.2, also 4.4.6, and then also have the local repeaters in the area that I monitor. So I'm making lots of contacts with people that I would ne normally never have the opportunity to listen to because I wouldn't know they were actually transmitting for a few seconds. So that's the really the, the big dividend here is being able to listen more and have this receiving station. Now, in terms of things I am working on right now, I did put in an order with MPD Digital for some LMR240. I got 65 feet. It ran me about 120 bucks for the custom cable. That's going to be arriving in a couple of days here. And I plan to install the Chameleon Cha Porta Mass 25, put that up 25 feet. So I'll get another 25 feet of elevation advantage with that antenna. Now, I really have great signal reports with my uh, 2980 behind me and even the longer run of RG8X. In fact, I'm not having a problem with the current runs even though there are losses, but going with the LMR240 to start just for the VHF UHF antenna is something that's going to be next on my list to do. Now I will tell you I wish I had done one thing differently and that is actually put in four connectors because I already see an opportunity here with the new mast I'm going to be installing to have a third antenna coming in. But again, the ultimate goal is what I have behind me is just fairly temporary for the most part. Um, I wanna put the utility box on this other wall that goes directly outside, and I wanna install a disc cone for uh, listening on VHF and UHF. I wanna install a beverage antenna for HF receive. I wanna install a terminated folded dipole and then leave myself room for another antenna, probably a GMRS vertical because I've been trying to get into GMRS for a while. So anyways guys, this project was not that difficult. Uh, I'm not the brightest guy in the world. I have not been terribly handy most of my life. Uh, this move out to the country about three years ago has actually changed a lot of things. So uh, skills are growing even outside of the amateur radio hobby. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, be strong, be safe, and be prepared.